Neil Curtis is an artist working out of Vienna. He has some interesting takes on the world, and in particular, one series of work which looks at how people are defined by the clothes they wear and what happens when you take that away from them and cover them in body paint. So tell us more, Neil is with me now. Hello, sir. Hi. Well, good to speak to you, and uh, yeah, good to see some of your work online. I mean, with what you do, um, it's very much taking an everyday view of people and not using their body as a canvas, as we, we have seen in the past, but turning it into sort of the reverse of that. And through the concept of these 100 people you've, you're working with, um, it really does take away all of those trappings that say they are one thing, and makes everybody the same underneath. Yeah, well, the Replace Closest Paint project is a very big project. It consists of uh, 100 people uh, who uh, sacrifice their uh, vulnerability, uh, their, their body, their uh, uh, personality to the project. And the main idea of the project is that uh, we we are very stiff, we are very uh, concerned about what people think about us and we should just let go, you know. We are here on this planet, planet maybe for, uh, I don't know, 50 years or 80 years or something like that and we should enjoy it. We should not be scared of, for example, of our nudity. And I myself was raised up in a very stiff way, in a very conservative way and uh, at some point I had to reclaim back my freedom, my uh, power over my body and um, I, I started to enjoy uh, being naked and I do not want to promote, uh, pr uh, promote uh, nudity in general. I think that we should be more relaxed about nudity in a context of art or in a context of sports. I mean, and if you look at art over the years and it's nudity has been part of it, studying the human form and uh, producing a still life, uh, you know, the sort of things that we've seen you know, from cherubs through to uh, voluptuous ladies relaxing on sofas through uh, art for many, many centuries. It, it's not a sexualized thing, it's studying the human form in the same way as we might do any of the other creatures on this planet, or even you know, a bowl of fruit or something else that is seen around us. So, you know, it is taking that human form. And, and what you're doing is in no way sexualized at all, is it? I don't know. It's uh, it's in the brain of the people if it's sexualized or not. We do not do it in a sexual way. Uh, we do it in a way. Uh, uh, let, me, let me just go back in in the history of how the project actually started. Mm -hmm. So one thing was that I was in exhibitions, and when I make exhibitions, I sometimes make uh, a performance at the beginning, and the people say it looks so interesting to see how the body. Trans transforms, you know, because all the pictures in the uh, exhibition are pictures like the ones behind me, so there are people who are already painted completely. And what we realized was that, first of all, uh, showing someone during painting is a very three-dimensional way, it's a very sculptural way, and also the people liked how, how, how one person all of a sudden became a completely painted body. So, the person is at first a surgeon or a professor or a mechanic and then the, the more we go on the more he strips off the social uh, the, the things the clothes that define him in in our social world and then transfers him into a world you could say the world of neil curtis my own art world or whatever uh, and in my world, the people are not defined by the clothes, they're not defined by the beard or the hair or whatever, they are defined by themselves and uh, they are like, uh, uh, some people said I'm like a, a fashion designer, could mm -hmm. be, yeah. I, I, I would love to make a, a fashion brand that's only based on, on, on a, a spray can, <laughs> kind of, <laughs> or, or a tin can. And, uh, but what's important for me is that when you look at all these videos, uh, I said, I previously said it's 100 videos, it's not yet 100 videos, it's now 69 videos. Mm -hmm. And when you look at all these videos, you know, there's the point when the person leaves the, 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 the comfort zone, you know, and starts uh, uh, being naked and being painted. And the interesting thing is that once the body is completely painted, there is less of a sexuality there. It's uh, many people also said they felt uh, not naked in a way, mm -hmm. and 
And for me, this is always very fascinating. Even even if I look at people when they look at the videos for uh, when, when 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 I have guests and then I talk about my project or whatever, and then they see okay, well now he strips off his clothes, he strips off his his uh, his, his uh, t-shirt and his trousers, and then at some point the underpants. And this is the most scary situation for many because this is now where they lost control you know mm -hmm. this is now where they are so scared about who's going to see it you know but that's that's part of nudity you know when you mm -hmm. go to a, a, a nude beach everyone is nude and sees you you see suit see the people you know but when you're working with these people, you say you've talked about the different backgrounds there, and the way you've explored some of them is slightly different. There are different ways of interpreting some of these people. But you take somebody like uh, your sleeper. So yeah, you've talked about jobs and, and things, but you take somebody who uh, is actually effectively asleep. They, they take uh, a, a, a sleeping tablet. This is part of their normal routine. That is their role. They start off with their teddy bear working on that one. But when the sleeper is defined by something like you know, bed hair, Actually, you take that away from them as well, and and you shave uh, this fella's head and beard away to to take him down to completely the the, the base of who he is, and and that must yeah. be something that for the subjects you're working with, uh, it, it changes their life for a, a period of time, as in way art does for many people when they experience something. So, you know, the, it, it is more than, than just the, the hour or so, two hours that they're working with you. It is actually something that, that will stay with them. And, and how do you think that has uh, you know, felt to them when they, they feed back to you? Yeah, well, may I, may I say something about the sleeper first? Uh... The whole project, uh, Replace Closest Paint, is the project that is going to have 100 uh, videos. And when you look at the, the, the videos, you can see all the little uh, stamps, stamp version, uh, on my website, neilcurtis.com. And when you look at the videos, you see that there's some kind of variation of diff different people. Some people are older, some people are younger. Yeah, they, they are surgeons, for example, so they are very respected people, and that the surgeon is actually a real person. And I want to have a variation, but I also want to have uh, some kind of, of imagination layer on, on this project. And so, for example, there is one uh, video which is called The Pizza Boy. Mm -hmm. And the pizza boy is actually knocking on my door, and then he gets inside and delivers me a pizza. And, I, I, I tell him, I give him 100 euro, and if he wants to participate in a cool project. And uh, he sits on the chair, and, and I take the control over. So I, I uh, strip him naked, paint him black, and then at some point he uh, uh, sits up and walks out. And the, uh, we ask, uh, I ask myself, how can I make this even more uh, 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 a situation of of no control, you know, because life is this is how life is, you know. Sometimes you do not have a control. Mm -hmm. And I, I I have a friend who's uh, uh, he's uh, he went to a, a party once and he got uh, uh, drugs uh, in, in his drinks mm -hmm. and so-called knockout pills, and uh, he fell asleep and then he woke up in the morning and he had no clue about what ha what was happening. And I, I did some investigation about how does it knockout bill work and so on. And then I realized this is actually uh, an idea I could do. So I paint you, you are asleep while you're sleeping. And, and in, uh, in order to be sure you're really sleeping, you're taking this knockout pills. Mm -hmm. And uh, he, the model was uh, allowed me to do that. It was an experiment for him. Mm -hmm. And I said to him, oh, what, uh, what is the limit? You know? And he said, I trust you. But uh, I have to admit that uh, the session is a, is a psychological session. So uh, I, I have to admit he was not uh, unconscious. Yeah. So the, the session itself was faked because uh, for legal reasons. You know, I could have, he, could, he would have allowed it to me, you know, but uh, I, 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 I would not be sure that uh, he, everything would, would, would work out and or he might have, uh, I don't know, he might sit down on the floor or whatever. Mm -hmm. But what you see in the session, we did a lot of research. I even interviewed a few people who got, uh, uh, who, who got knocked out. Mm -hmm. So the session is very realistic and I wanted to push the limits even further because for me in this project, it's very important to keep on pushing the limits. You know, this is why I also decided to do a very political statement uh, with the guy from New York, the, 
the, the last video I, I, I published. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's a video where I, I, I uh, broke a rule because my rule is that there is no audio in the videos. And um, I broke the rules because uh, I have many friends in New York and this guy represents one of my friends. And the, there's a layer of a collage of, of words that Trump said, and it's so absurd, you know. So I wanted to, uh, yeah, use that as well. Now, all of these uh, videos themselves are to be presented in uh, uh, a sort of portrait view. Now, this is a view that we're often used to seeing on our telephones these days, but uh, most art and most of what we see is in landscape format. So again, this is something which uh, is a way of delivering uh, this piece of, of effectively performance art that is, is different to what we would necessarily normally anticipate. First of all, the project uh, started about eight years ago, and uh, I was uh, at the Gatti Museum in uh, uh, Los Angeles. Mm -hmm. And I walked around and I saw many, many pictures and I liked them, but they were a little bit boring. So I asked myself, oh God, I would love to have an exhibition in the Getty Museum, mm -hmm. but I would do it completely different. Yeah. So the first idea was that uh, pictures are not just static. The pictures have some kind of story they tell or they are, um, they, they are alive, you could say. And when I returned home from that trip, at some point I asked a friend and I said, sit down on the chair and I'm going to try something out with you. And he was sitting on the chair like I do here right now. And uh, I replaced his clothes with pen. It was more like an experiment. It was not like, oh, we're now doing a big project, blah, blah. It was an experiment, a tryout. And for me, it was very important to ask myself, how, how do I want to present this these videos and the idea was to present them in such an exhibition like in the Getty Museum. And uh, so I turned the camera around and noticed it was eight years ago, so that was the time before Instagram. I yeah. just did it because I wanted to, you know. Mm -hmm. yep. and, and I turned it around and it makes a lot more sense to film someone in, in a vertical uh, a version because then you can see everything. You don't only see the face mm -hmm. and lots of space around the face. You see the face and the rest of it. And I, I made this video in, the, in this format and I said that I want to keep doing this. And many people said, ah, but you cannot show it anywhere. And I said, yes, I can show it, you know, because at the end there will be some kind of big film, you know, and you can see like three videos at the same time. Mm -hmm. So the, the formal actually makes sense when you go into editing and into further steps. There will also be a book or actually four books uh, about the project. So the book is also not wide screen, it's, it's tall screen. So this format mm -hmm. makes sense a lot, you know, yep. and that's why I choose it. Well, your work is available online, this and other projects. Where, again, can people go to to find more about everything you do? Oh, my website is uh, neilcurtis.com, and on the website you can find uh, all the links to the to the project, replace clothes paint. I also make exhibitions. Uh, unfortunately, as you can imagine, not in in time of COVID nineteen, but uh, there is a uh, there is that replace clothes paint project, and there are also other uh, pictures that I just show in the body. Uh, you can head over to Instagram as well, Neil Curtis is the Instagram. You can find all the links on the website, neilcurtis.com. There's also Twitter, uh, because uh, when I when I publish new new work or when I'm releasing a new uh, Replace Close Paint video, I'm, I'm publishing it there. Well, Neil, great to talk to you. Thank you for sharing your art. And we look forward to seeing more from you in the near future as you head towards 100 in this particular project. Yes, and maybe you are the number 100. Maybe, maybe not. But either way, Neil, thank you. <laughs> See you. Bye.